Hello, welcome to this uh, session on ISO 9000. Today we will cover clause number 8 of ISO 9000, uh, which is a very important clause with respect to the improvement, like how we should improve the quality and that is the basic purpose of any uh, international standard like ISO, how uh, we, we can improve our performance uh, of our processes and performance of our company. So a lot of guidance is given in this clause number 8. Uh, first of all, this clause talks about uh, in the clause 8.1, basically to make a plan of uh, what is the measurements which we will be doing at various stages and you know, for various departments, what are the tools we will be using, what kind of statistical techniques we will be using because this clause also covers uh, statistical techniques uh, which is very important part of any quality engineering activities. So which statistical techniques we will be using like control charts or um, hypothesis testing or maybe process capabilities, any other kind of st statistical techniques. So we have to make a plan of our measurement and analysis. The second clause uh, is 8.2 which talks about monitoring and measurement which has a few more sub clauses such as 8.2.1 which talks about customer satisfaction. Uh, so basically it covers the like what kind of methods we can adopt to assess the customer satisfaction and uh, what are the like uh, uh, surveys or what are the like uh, dealers conferences or what are the customer conferences or we, can we look at what are the repeat business we are getting so a lot of guidance is given with respect to assessing the data for customer satisfaction and obtaining an index of customer satisfaction which, which is the barometer of our quality performance the next clause of um, this eighth is eighth clause is 8.2.2 which talks about internal auditing practices like how the internal audit is uh, to be planned, how the auditors to be selected, what kind of training the auditor should get, how much uh, should be the frequency of audits, uh, what should be the criteria of deciding the uh, frequency of audit and uh, like more important processes should be audited more or the more areas which requires improvement should be audited more. Such kind of guidance is given. There is a requirement of a procedure which should cover all these kind of activities. And uh, uh, it also talks about taking the corrective actions on audits, timely corrective actions by the manager who is responsible for the area being audited. And it also talks about that uh, audit should be independent, it should be unbiased, it should be done by people who are not uh, directly related to that particular activity being audited. Uh, we will also cover this uh, auditing process more in details in our next uh, few more sessions. Uh, let's move to 8.2.3 which talks about measurement and analysis of uh, processes. Uh, what kind of uh, like uh, processes, uh, we, uh, parameters which we should measure in, uh, which should give us the idea about how the processes are being performed. And the second part is 8.2.4 which talks about measurement uh, and monitoring of product. Mm -hmm. Basically which is the final product testing and a release mechanism uh, where we release the product to the customer and uh, whether we follow a particular product quality plan, whether we follow a particular customer requirement and in all these cases it is very clearly given by ISO standard that uh, we have to involve customer and we have to focus on customer. We cannot dispatch any product uh, if it is uh, the processes are not complete and those kind of aspects. Uh, the next clause is 8.3 which talks about uh, non-conforming product, a product which is no good and how to handle such a situation. Um, what kind of options a company can take, uh, whether to reject that uh, outright, whether to repair that and then reinspect that and then send it to customer, whether to um, just accept it because the uh, defects are not so critical and uh, take an approval from customer or an internal approval from a relevant authority uh, on that subject. All such kind of options in case when there is a non-conformance uh, in the product is observed. Uh, it requires that uh, there should be a record uh, for non-conformance to be maintained. 
and uh, the next clause talks about 8.4 which is analysis of data uh, like um, how we will be summarizing the data what kind of tools we will be using uh, what kind of trends we will be looking at uh, which the data may be customer related the supplier related process related human resources data any other data but what kind of um, analysis we will be doing analysis is basically summarizing that so that we can get some trends and um, bring out the improvement aspects the last clause of this uh, clause, improvement clause is 8.5 which has again three components 8.5.1 which talks about that there are so many tools given basically there are some seven tools given by ISO uh, which should be used for um, quality improvement such as uh, quality policy, quality objectives, management reviews, internal audits, corrective actions, preventive actions, analysis of data and like that there are these seven tools we have to use for quality improvement and uh, they, should, they should be continuously focused these seven aspects of quality management. Thus, the standard and the clause ends up with two kind of actions. One is the corrective action and another is the preventive actions. The text written is quite similar but uh, there is a, like a huge difference between the approach of a preventive action and a corrective action. Uh, preventive action is basically an action taken on a problem which is not yet occurred but we can plan and we can anticipate based on our experience, based on our risk analysis, based on our failure mode and effect analysis and such kind of tools. We can predict some problems, we can look at some trends, look at some control charts and then this say that okay there is going to be some problem so let's take action before the problem actually takes place. Such actions are called preventive actions. Basically to identify the causes of a potential problem and the corrective action is also um, given in this clause which is 8.5.2 uh, which talks about uh, taking actions on uh, the problems which have existed but uh, taking actions so that they should not repeat or they should not reoccur or the trend of such problems should be reduced. So in, in case of corrective actions the problems have already occurred but now the efforts are there on the root causes on the various aspects factors of those problems so that the problems do not reoccur. So th there is a difference like uh, corrective action means uh, how to take actions on causes so that similar problems or such problems are, do not reoccur while in preventive actions you have to anticipate the activities, you have to anticipate the problems, you have to look at the trends, you have to do some risk analysis and take actions before even the problem is occurred once also. So preventive action is right first time and corrective action is taking actions on the so that the problems do not reoccur or the probability of reoccurrence is reduced. So thank you very much.